What is going on, everybody? RB here. Welcome back on Into Philly Take with RB. You already know what to do, man. Go ahead and smash that like button. Hit that subscribe if you're new. And hit that notification bell. That way you are instantly notified anytime I upload or go live. We are back every single day pumping out content. And, uh, you know, doing those kinds of things really helps out us content creators, man. I hope everybody is having a great day. You know what? Let's go ahead and hit the intro, man. Drop the perfect real quick. Perfect. Perfect. I love it, man. I love it. I had to drop it real quick for you guys. Hope everybody's having a great day, man. It is uh, partially cloudy out here. Uh, July 13th, MLB All-Star Game on tonight. We have some things to talk about, Sixers related. Um, shout out to all 54 of you guys up in here, man. Appreciate it. Hit that like, subscribe. Shout out, by the way, to the channel members. I see some of them already up in the building, man. Um, let's see. We got Lindy Enzone in here. What's up, man? Philly Take with RB Fan. Petey, what's up, my guy? Scott Lawrence, what's good, bro? What's good? What's good? Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. We are back doing our thing. Hope everybody's having a great day, man. And um, by the way, let me know, guys, in the chat, can you hear any background noise at all? Let me know, because I finally invested in an air conditioner uh, in this room, and... Man, it feels so much better. You guys don't know the struggle, man, of trying to do some videos when it's hot. When it's hot, man. Let me know if you can hear any background noise. But anyway, before we get on in, we'll, we'll be on here for about an hour. So uh, I have some good things to talk about. I want to uh, I want to make a few announcements real quick. So number one, um, first and foremost, thank you guys for always tuning in uh, to the content and all. I really appreciate it. I've been thinking about what I want to do with the channel, right? Um, especially with the Sixers being done now and the Eagles coming up and all this NBA offseason stuff. So I was thinking about doing maybe two to three live streams a week for the Sixers, maybe one like this midday lunchtime kind of live stream, and then maybe one at night, you know, Tuesdays, Thursday, something like that. Um, you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments section. That's probably what I'm going to be doing, maybe two to three live streams a week. And then obviously I'll still be posting the videos, right, the trade stuff, free agency, all that, uh, you know, kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to be incorporate. I'm, I'm going to try to be incorporating some Eagles back in here in about a month or so, maybe a couple weeks when things start to get going in training camp. Um, but I'm still going to be talking about the Sixers and stuff. I'm still going to be doing, you know, like half and half or, or whatever. We'll see how it goes. But, um, yeah, give me your thoughts, man. I, I definitely like doing the live streams. Um, and yeah, let me know your thoughts in the chat. Uh, in addition to that, Shout out to the channel members. We will be having a live stream tonight around 7.30 p.m. We're going to be talking merchandise, new membership perks, and that's right. Yes, the merchandise should be dropping tomorrow, guys. If it doesn't drop tomorrow, it will drop the next day. But either in the next day or two, we finally have it all wrapped up. If you're looking to support the channel and you're looking to rock some Philly Take with RB merch, be on the lookout tomorrow morning, man. Be on the lookout. It's, uh, it's going to be fire. No doubt about it. So be on the lookout for that. I'm sorry it took this long, but we're finally here. And what else? Oh, yeah, the membership perks. I've revamped them. So, uh, you know, kind of freshen some things up. So if you're looking to become a Fire Take member, the link is in the description. Uh, the new perks will be updated tomorrow after we talk about them on the members live stream tonight. Um, let's see. What else did I want to say? I forget. <coughs> Shout out to uh, Mikey coming in and joining the Fire Take Nation. Yes, sir. Don't have the sound bites uh, lined up, but man, go show my man Mikey some love. Members, give him a warm welcome. Mikey, welcome to the Fire Take Nation, home of the hottest takes, realest of the real. Appreciate you a lot, my man. Welcome to the Fire Take Nation. Welcome to the family, man. Welcome to the family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Mikey. Welcome, bro. And, and shout out again to all the Fire Tick members. I really appreciate you guys always supporting, man, even throughout, you know, the entire season. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, so I'm actually going on vacation next week, guys, so I'm probably not going to be uploading a lot of videos. I might make some in advance, just so you know. Uh, they may be posted. I might have to make some on the spot on vacation on my phone or something. Um, but let me know, guys. Do you want me to live stream the draft again? Because 
the draft has, you know, approached us so fast. It's literally like in a couple weeks. And I live streamed the draft last year. It was a lot of fun. Let me know if you want me to do that again. I'm going to try to get like maybe one or two draft videos out. I know the Sixers pick late in the first round. Um, it's going to be kind of a hit or miss thing. You know, I feel like the draft has come upon us so quickly. It's like there's probably going to be a lot of late hidden gems again. Just how we got Tyrese Maxey at pick 21. I, th I feel like there's going to be, you know, some picks like that. It's going to be hard to guess since I feel like the draft came so fast. But I'm going to try to get a video out on some prospects. I've been watching some things. Um and let me know if you want me to live stream the draft. I'll be back home a couple days before the draft. So maybe we'll get a, you know, a draft special, whatever. And let me know. Let me know. Um, and I'm definitely going to be live streaming free agency and stuff like that. So you guys want it? Definitely. We're going to, you know, maybe do a collab and stuff. I also want to do some uh, some collaborations, no doubt. So, um, yeah, we'll be we'll be covering anything Sixers related. We will be covering, uh, staying updated on that. Again, guys, thank you so much for uh, continually supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Like I said, if you guys are just tuning in, we'll be doing at least a couple live streams a week. Be doing other videos and stuff. Um, and yeah, we have a lot of good things coming on the channel, man. It's been a it's been a busy time for me lately in my personal life. Um, so you know, I appreciate you guys uh, staying tuned in. But anyway, if I remember anything else. I will talk about it, but let's let, let's go ahead and get into the Sixer stuff today. By the way, we got the new overlay. What do you guys think, man? What do you guys think, man? Sounds like everybody's excited. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Shifty's up in here. Shout out to Mikey, our new member. Um, Derek, what's up, bro? Wesley, what's up, man? We made some huge moves during the draft last season. I'd like a live. Definitely, man. I I'm excited. I'm excited for sure. John Castiglio, another great channel member. What's up, John? Question the chances Ben gets traded before the draft. I would say highly unlikely. I would say highly unlikely. I don't think the Sixers are going to like trade him for a couple draft picks, so I would say unlikely. But what I will say to you, John, is after the finals wrap up, I really do think the talks are going to start to heat up, right? You're going to hear players that won out. You're going to hear guys declining options and things of that nature. So I really do think that, we're, we're, we're kind of being restricted right now with the season still on. They don't usually like to have that kind of news come out like during the finals because it, especially this year, you know, it'll take away from what we do have in the finals. So I think once the the, the last, you know, series wraps up, I think we're going to hear a lot. And I don't know about you guys, but like I love the free agency, right? Like free agency is on like August 6th. So I, that whole kind of like week right there, I'm going to be doing live streams like, I love that stuff, man. Like Woj tweeting every three seconds, like, oh, this player is rumored to go here. This 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 is happening here. This and that. I love that stuff. So um, I can't wait to live stream that stuff, man. Um, let's see. Lucas says, live stream the draft. I'm gonna be on vacation. I want to watch it. Yeah, definitely, man. We'll definitely uh we'll definitely have to do that. <coughs> Did you hear the Sixers just opened up trade talks for Ben? Um not officially, not officially, but let me know what you mean. Adonis, what up, man? I had a dream we got Dame. I think it's a sign. There we go. Alejandro, what's up? RB and Eastwood. Yeah, I'm down to I'm down to collab with him, no doubt. Uh, let's see. We're about to get into all this stuff I want to talk about, man. And, you know, we'll like I said, we'll be doing multiple live streams a week, probably like an hour show. Um, maybe we'll do some call-ins. I definitely want to do a – let me know if you guys want me to do a Ben Simmons call-in show. I'm definitely down to do that. Um, three-way trade idea. Portland gets D'Lo and six first rounders. Holy crap. Minnesota gets Ben, Nasir Little and two second rounds. Philly gets Damon Malik Beasley. Sorry for the spam. I mean, <coughs> I mean, I would take that. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's necessarily fair. I feel like that's a bit biased in the, in the Sixers favor, but I mean, you're giving me Damon Malik Beasley. I'm taking it every day, twice on Sunday. You know what I mean? That's funny. That's funny. But, man, we're going to be talking about a bunch of trades. Elliot, what's up, man? Zach, what's good? Let's see. Jonah, what's up, bro? I'm in Washington right now. Be safe, my man. Thoughts on Lillard's playmaking and defense abilities. My thoughts is that, you know, Lillard's going to come in here and, and be a stud. That's what he would do. You know, I mean, that, that's just who Dame is. I Look, he can playmake. I know he's not the best defender. He's little, but guess what? You know, there's other ways to make up for that. Another way to make up for that is to put up 40 points, and that's what he can do on any given night. So 
look on shams. All right, guys, let's get into it. Shout out to everybody in here. Um, Coach Dante, what's going on, man? Derek says it's official. They tweeted. Okay, let's look at it. Let's look at it, guys. Here we go. I have some things to talk about, but, you know, you guys you guys run the show. Oh, here we go. Here we go. First thing that popped up. First thing that popped up. Let's see. All righty. Bang. Let's see. The Philadelphia 76ers have opened up trade conversations surrounding three-time All-Star Ben Simmons and have engaged with teams. Let's see. The Knicks. Oh, wait, no, I think that's something else. I, I thought it was saying the Knicks are interested. Um, opened up trade. Of course, I probably won't be able to read this. Yeah, of course, I don't have the athletic. But, um, man, how about that? Sixers opening up Ben Simmons trade talks. Knicks interested in Colin Sexton and more NBA news. <coughs> I wonder if anybody else has like uh, reported about this. Let's see. Let's see if Woj said anything. Dude, why? They got some dude trying to clean up the streets out here. Like, come on, man. You're being loud. You're being loud. Let's see. Um, Nope, nothing here. Nothing here. So I guess just shams. But going back. Let's see. So Sixers have opened up trade conversations surrounding three-time All-Star Ben and have engaged with teams. So, I mean, here it is, guys. I mean, I, I've been trying to tell you guys, like, there is probably little to no chance of Ben Simmons coming back to the Philadelphia 76ers, and there's a plethora of reasons why. Um, but just, I mean, I said, like, I literally just said a couple minutes ago to uh, John, like, I thought it would wait kind of till after the finals, but here we go. I mean, they're already opening things up. So um, it's pretty inevitable at this point. He'll probably be moved. But, you know, I, I do want to say one thing. Like, here's one thing I do want to say. Um, I, I do get the concerns about it being the right time. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I do agree with that. Like, I don't want to give Ben Simmons away right now for, like, nothing. I do think we should try to get as much value as we can. Um, only Daryl Morey knows that value, right? He's the guy making the calls. And it's kind of hard to know based off of, you know, only one offer that we've seen. So I'm hoping to hear more talks, for example, like this report. Hopefully we hear more proposed trade offers or something. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't want to give Ben away for nothing. But I do think we – here's what I'll say overall. The pressure is on Daryl Morey, guys, because, listen, Ben Simmons' time is done in Philadelphia, Okay. If we don't go out and we don't acquire a mega superstar this offseason, let me tell you something, all right? It, it, it is absolutely a bust of an offseason. You could tell me wait to the trade deadline. This There's nothing certain about what can happen between the start of next season and the trade deadline. So if I'm being completely honest with you, if the Sixers don't go out and acquire a big superstar this offseason, it's a bust. It is. Not only are you telling the Sixers fans that, you know, you're complacent with just being where you are and you don't want to get over that hump and you don't feel it's time to do that. But in addition to that, you're also saying to Joel Embiid, you know, your health is eh, we'll do what we can. No, the time to win is now. We have to go out and capitalize right now. We, we don't have any more time to wait. And to be completely honest, if we go, say, this next season and we don't do anything, and Ben Simmons comes back and he's the same player and we don't go and get another, you know, elite wing or a guard or anything like that. If I'm Joel Embiid, I think about requesting a trade. I'm being completely honest with you guys. I mean, that that would if I'm Joel Embiid and we've gotten to this point and we can't get past the second round and Daryl Morey doesn't have it in him to go out and make something huge happen. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know, it's never going to happen. And I wouldn't be surprised if he requested a trade after that. So it, it like there's a lot of pressure, man. There's a lot of time. There's a lot of things that can happen. But we need a Dane Lillard. We need a Kawhi Leonard. We need a, at least a Kyle Lowry, a player like that. We can't settle for a couple young draft picks. We can't settle for Malcolm Brogdon. 
right? Like we have to make something happen. We have to go into next season and be talked about like we are a championship contender. That's really it. That's where we're at, man. That's really where we're at. <clears throat> They're open to trading them for all-star caliber player. Yeah, that's what it's going to have to be like. That's what it's going to have to be like. And, you know, it's just, again, it's disappointing. But at the same time, it's like it is what it is at this point. You know, if you bring Ben Simmons back, the fans of Philly are going to – they're just I, – I don't know. They're just not going to be happy. I mean, he's going to get booed every time on the floor. It's it's going to turn out ugly. And, you know, I, I'm sorry, but Ben brought this upon himself. He He's just not invested here. So send him to the West Coast. Do what you have to do. Send him to Minnesota. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> this loud mouth on FS1 is saying Ben of the Warriors for Wiggins. See, this is the kind of stuff, Richie, and this is why you can't pay attention to the talking heads, you know? Because think about it logically. What, like, look, this draft, if you've been keeping up with, you know, potential draft prospects and stuff, this draft is going to have a plethora of guards, like really good guards. This may be one of the best drafts you know, that we look back years down the road and say, holy, like this has some really good players. But here's the problem. We have a Tyrese Mack. We need to win now. So if we're trading for Andrew Wiggins and a couple first round picks, that's not going to do it for me unless we go out then and subsequently acquire a star in, in a trade. Like it's just not going to do it for me. You know, I, I like I'm maturing as a basketball fan. It's crazy I can say that because I used to be that guy that, like, clinged on to people. But at this point, I'm just seeing the light. Like, we have to win now. There's there's nothing else. And if we can't do that, then maybe we have to start over. I'm sorry, man. That's really where we're at. That's where we're at. So, but, yeah, Ben Simmons conversations have started, man. And, you know, Daryl Morey is going to try to make something happen. I, if there's one person I believe in, it is Daryl Morey. Um, I believe in Daryl Morey to, to acquire a star. I, I don't know if it's going to be the star we want, but I know he's going to do everything he can. He's going to try to push all the buttons to get the star that we want. Um, and, and this guy listens to the fans. You know, he's he basically is a fan. So I'm excited for that. <clears throat> Shout out to uh, Lindy, man. Appreciate you being in here. Pumped for this week. Yes, sir. Shout out to my guy, Lindy. If you guys aren't subscribed to him, go please subscribe to his channel, please. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, let's get into some of the things I wanted to talk about here. Um, first and foremost, this picture from last night. So if you guys hadn't seen, um, Team USA loses again. Team USA lost to Australia. Now, I made a I made a joke on Twitter and um, shout out to my guy Shifty in the chat, man. He's the one that sent me this picture first. Appreciate you guys always sending me stuff. But yo, I made a joke on Twitter. Like, is Team USA tanking? <laughs> is Team Yo? I was watching the home run derby last night, and I tune in in the third late third quarter. I watched the fourth quarter while I'm watching a home run derby. And, and what what is up with Team USA basketball? Right? I mean, I'm seeing like. It's just all ISO ball. Greg Popovich just looks like he's just hanging out on the sideline. These dudes just don't even look like they care. And, and I'm I'm watching Joe Ingles, Patty Mills, and Matisse Thibel single-handedly take down Team USA. I'm sitting here, and I'm just like, I'm like, is this really happening? The, the, the Team USA has now lost to Nigeria and Australia in their first two games. Now, it doesn't really matter. And I'm sure they'll get their act together. But, like, what is happening, man? I go and I think back to the teams that I watched, you know, like LeBron and Carmelo and, you know, Kobe and all those guys. And I'm like, what has happened to USA basketball? I'm watching all this isolation ball. These guys are, like, turning it over late in the game. Matisse Thibel, before we talk about his game, look at this picture, man. I Look, does this mean anything? Probably not. But man, look at that! Look at that smile, man. Mat Matisse Stiebel has a smile of gold, and this dude, we're gonna talk about his game last night. He's out here making vlogs. Matisse Stiebel's a stud, man. Look at this, 
NBA posted this for a reason. I think it was on their uh, their Instagram page or whatever. But Matisse Thybul, Dame Lillard, you know, I had to throw my jokes around. Future teammates, hmm, hmm. Matisse Thybul had a huge block on Damian Lillard on um after a rebound. Matisse Thybul also blocked Kevin Durant. Matisse Thybul also stepped into a couple threes. He also hit one off the pull up dribble. I'm like, Whoa. I'm like, yo, who is this Matisse Thybul? And this is what sucks because I finally come over the hump where I'm like, okay, I don't, I, you know, I'm all right with trading whoever to go out and get a player like Dame. I don't want to trade Matisse Thybul. I don't. I promise you, I don't. This guy. He's going to be one of the best defensive players in the, in the entire league. He really is. He's a freaking stud. What do I always say about Matisse? This dude sees plays five plays before they happen. His instincts are off the charts. He's unbelievable, man. But, hey, you know, I, I've, I've heard some things in terms of Team USA before. Stars talk, okay? This is the NBA. Just like any other friends would talk, just like a you know a, a businessman would go up to another businessman and say, "Yo, I got an opportunity for you." These guys talk. What better place than in Team USA, surrounded by the best players, right? You know, there there's some recruiting that goes on, um, and I just hope that Dame is talking because you know let let let's look at this article that I, I read this. Well, I, actually, I didn't read; I read the first sentence, but I wanted to react with you guys. Um, <clears throat> this is from a, uh, I think a Blazers website and, you know, people keep telling me, oh, Dame's not going anywhere. Says who? The only thing, see, Dame Lillard is being very smart because people know he's a loyal guy, right? He's stepping around his words. He doesn't want to say anything too over the edge, but at the same time, he hasn't said, you know, please go ahead and find me where Damian Lillard has said, I want to be with Portland for the rest of my career. Please tell me where he said that. He hasn't. People are saying, oh, he's fine with the Chauncey Billups hire. No. He actually wanted Jason Kidd, and he literally admitted that he did not know about the whole allegations thing. So sure, Chauncey Billups is going to be a good coach, right? But with, with all the scrutiny going on, with everything this organization has lacked to put around Damian Lillard, I know he's a loyal guy, but at some point... See, the thing about Damian Lillard is he's a cold-blooded killer. He has the desire to win. So at some point, I know it's eating him away inside. I know he doesn't want to have that image where it's like, oh, you know, I'm selling my soul to go win a championship. But at the end of the day, he's 30 years old. And he is at the, like, he may be at the peak of his career right now. I don't know if he's going to get better than what he's at right now. And that's no knock on him. He's just too damn good. So why not? Why not try to go win a chip, man? The hard part about it is that he has four years left on his contract. And he's being paid a ton of money, so it's going to be hard to move that. But, I, I, you know, they can demand any kind of package. They can go in any kind of direction. And I will hold the belief firm that the Sixers have one of the best packages to offer for Damian Lillard. So, but we're going to be, we're going to read this article. Um, let's see. Ben should play Team Australia, who lost a good chance of proving. He doesn't care, Andy. See, that's the thing. People were saying, you know, if Ben Simmons played for Australia, they would have lost. Maybe. I mean, you see how how good Matisse Thybul looks? Because in the Olympics, they just play free. You know, they just play kind of smooth, and they sit back, and, you know, the, the ball movement was insane for Australia. Like, they, they looked really connected, and it's a pride thing for your country, and it's crazy a lot of the Australian fans that follow, you know, my channel and comment on my videos and stuff, they tell me, you know, I, we don't really like Ben Simmons anymore. He doesn't show pride. And it's the same way he went out here in Philadelphia with no pride. He didn't try to go out swinging. He just went out and, and took his foot off and said, OK, we're laying down. So it, it's it is what it is, man. But yeah, he, he just the reason he's not playing is because he doesn't like really care. And there was actually a, uh, maybe, maybe I'll react to this uh, later, but I was watching an interview last night with Howard Eskin and I, you know, Howard Eskin's a personality, right? In Philadelphia sports, obviously you, sh you should probably know who that is. Um, 
But he, you know, he covers the team and he is, you know, always in the interviews, the press conferences and stuff. He made a statement saying that Ben Simmons has not been in the offseason facility. Like he hasn't been in the facility during any Sixers offseason since he's got to Philadelphia. He trains on his own. He stays out west. He doesn't even come back here. Like he doesn't build that team chemistry or nothing. He doesn't work out with his teammates. It's just little things like that. And, you know, we gave him the leash. We gave him the leash. So uh, he just, I mean, I don't know. He just never got better. So, but anyway, um, <clears throat> any Ben trade for a superstar will include Matisse. Maybe, maybe it will. Matisse or Max, you know. Um, but hey, look at looking at this article. Let's see what the Blazers writers are saying. Um, hold on, let me see if I can uh, zoom this in for you guys. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Busy offseason front offices across the NBA are closely monitoring the situation between the Blazers and Lillard. If the six time All Star becomes available, the market is to be plentiful. Um, Bodner, the beat writer for the Philadelphia 76ers, mentioned Daryl Morey's aggressiveness when it comes to pursuing disgruntled superstars that hit the trade market. He's not lying. He's not lying at all. Given both their glaring need for a perimeter complement to Joe Embiid and the availability of their own multi-time all-star guard, Philly could be a team to watch. Bodner envisions the Sixers being very aggressive under the circumstance. We also know the organization isn't against trading Simmons. That was true in January when they pursued Harden. Simmons becoming a shell of himself in the playoffs certainly hasn't caused them to change course. When you add it all up, I think it's a virtual lock. The Sixers would be aggressive if Lillard does hit the market very, very aggressive. So, I mean, he's not lying, and the Sixers have a lot to offer. This is what I keep saying to people. Is it the best offer? I don't know. We would have to see what other teams are willing to throw out because what other teams are going to be after Dame Lillard realistically that have a package to throw? The Knicks come to my mind. The Knicks are going to be in line for a point guard, um, but it is the Knicks. So are, are they going to be able to land them? Uh, people keep throwing out the Lakers. The Lakers don't have any assets to land Damian Lillard unless they're trading away Anthony Davis. And I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I don't know. I don't know any other big market team. May, I mean, I don't know. Miami, maybe if they have enough. I don't know if they do either. But I know if the Sixers offered Ben Simmons – just say Tyrese or Matisse and a couple first. I mean, that is a huge package that you can build around and still be competitive with, you know? So stretch four is important. However, they need a player like Jimmy that does not shy away in the closing minutes. You're exactly right, Rich. And we need a player that can be on the floor and hit big shots, man. I, you know, I don't think anybody on this team is safe. I really don't. I think Tobias could go too. And if him and Ben went and you clear both of those $30 million contracts off the books, I'm I'm all right with that. I am. Whatever it's going to take. Now, maybe Tobias can be our third option, but, you know, we'll see, man. Ben Simmons to Hollywood doesn't fit blue-collar Philly. He doesn't, man. And it just showed in, in, in the kind of moments and how he handled himself, you know? Jameson, what's up, man? Welcome on in. Shout out to everybody in the chat, guys. Please like and subscribe. We have a lot to talk about still. Let's keep going here. Trade scenario sees the Sixers providing a package of Simmons, Tyrese, and or Matisse. Two first, a swap on another assortment of draft picks. That or bring along a third team to sweeten the deal. I ultimately think it would be a three-team deal. Um, I don't know if I want to throw Ben, Tyrese, Matisse, two first, and a pick swap. That's a that's a lot for me. I mean, that that is a lot. But then again, I'm also thinking like I, I've come over that hump like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to win. Now, you're giving up a lot of defense, you know, in terms of that, a lot of young talent. But, man, it's uh, it's rough. It's rough. I just hate – like, this is Philadelphia, and I hate how this keeps happening. Because if only we had hit on a number one overall pick. But, no, Markel Fultz forgot how to shoot a month before the season. He couldn't shoot anymore. Ben Simmons can shoot but won't take it. And that's the ultimate that's the ultimate killer in this situation, man. It's just the unwillingness. Like, even if Ben was trying, I'm sure Sixers fans would at least try to be behind him. But it's just the unwillingness, man. And it's just Ben's got to go somewhere, get a fresh start on his career, and somewhere that's not going to be in the spotlight and somewhere where he can just, you know, try to develop. But I almost think at this point it's almost a lost cause, you know? Um, 
but we'll see. Golden State Warriors sees them aggressively pursuing the greatest shooting trio. I don't see the Warriors coming out here and, and getting this done. I really don't. What are they going to give up? And, you know, is Dame, set, is Dame Steph, and Clay going to work on the same team? I, I don't know. That's kind, of, that's kind of hard. I mean, Kevin Durant was a nice fit alongside them. But, you know, Dame wants the ball in his hands. Unless Steph Curry wants to become a off-ball shooter permanently, um, that would be interesting. Here's the Knicks offer. Yeah, the Knicks have a lot of cap room, by the way. That gives them an advantage if they're willing to throw out a lot. But here's their proposed offer. It says, <clears throat> um, R.J. Barrett, Obi Toppin, Kevin Knox, a pair of 2021 NBA draft first rounders, protected picks in 23 and 25, a pick swap somewhere down the line. I, I'm just looking at this if I'm the Trailblazers, right? And I'm I'm not trying to look at it biased at all. Am I taking this offer right here? Let me know in the chat. Are we taking if you're the Blazers GM, are you taking this offer right here? Or are you taking Ben Simmons, Tyrese Maxey, three first rounders, and, and something else? Like, please tell me. I, as much as we harp on Ben Simmons, he probably is the most versatile defender in the league. And if you get a player like a Tyrese Maxey who looks like he's gonna have star potential written all across his forehead, I mean. I don't know. I I feel like I'm not looking at this just as a biased Sixers fan. Like I'm being honest here. If I'm the if I'm the Trailblazers, I would much prefer Ben Simmons, especially a team that needs defense. You know, I mean, Obi Toppin didn't have that good of a year. Kevin Knox is a bust. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, that's that. Let's get that out of here. Here's the next thing I want to look at. This is uh, Matisse Thibel last night with a block on Dame Lillard. Let's read uh, Let's read a few comments real quick. Shout out to everybody in here. Please like, subscribe, guys. We're going to be doing live shows every week. We're going to be uh, covering Sixers. We've got the merch dropping soon. Members live stream tonight. Bunch of stuff, guys. Let's see. <clears throat> Maxi and Thibel are very promising. It'd be hard to give up on one or the other. But for Dame, it's worth it. Exactly, man. Like, you have to be willing to give up something. You have to. And, and you know, people are – I'm seeing people say, oh, well, if we trade so-and-so for a star, we're going to give up the bench. Guys, what bench are we talking about? We need a revamp of our bench. Our bench came up with zero spots in the biggest moments. George Hill was essentially nothing. He's going to be a nice trade piece with this contract to throw in there. But Furkan, I don't think he's a championship bench piece. Now – if somehow we find a way to keep Tyrese Maxey, I would love him to kind of be a six man and, you know, learn from another point guard and maybe become the future point guard. Because I do think Tyrese Maxey can eventually be, you know, a, a top tier point guard on maybe a winning team. But I don't think he's ready yet. It's not his fault. It's just how the, how the dice rolls, you know. You just need some time. But I don't know, man. <clears throat> Secret Underdog, what's up, man? RJ says, do we consider a successful offseason if we get Beal or Lowry or is Dame the end-all, be-all? See, that's the thing. See, I've been talking about that, and people were, were, I mean, I don't know. I've been trying to avoid the comments a lot because some things just don't make sense. But if the Sixers were to go out and they do a sign and trade and they don't give up a lot and they get Kyle Lowry, right, and then they come out and say, you know, acquire a forward via trade or free agency, maybe Kawhi opts out, right? That would be huge. Like Kyle Lowry could, you know, recruit some forwards here. He knows he's in with a lot of players in the league. But if we get a Kyle Lowry and maybe a, a, a nice forward, maybe not a star, but say we keep Tobias Harris, we get a forward. And then you have a lineup of Kyle Lowry, Seth Curry, a forward, you know, like a decent 3 and D guy at least, Tobias Harris and Joel Embiid. That's a pretty good lineup to me. At least that would be something. Now, Bradley Beal, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I have no clue what the heck's going to happen with Bradley Beal. I really don't. Because this man continually tries to say he doesn't want out of Washington. I would love Bradley Beal. People call him a stat patter. What I see is a guy that can ball. That's what he is. Um, and I, I do think it, I think it would be a good trade for both teams. But I just don't know about Bradley Beal. I don't know. And Zach Levine, in my personal opinion, I don't think he's going to get traded. So 
I don't know, man. <clears throat> but I, I think the Sixers have to do something big, man. Like I said, we can't we 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 can't just sit here and let Ben come back. We can't just sit here and go out and get another role player. Like we can't do that. We have to win. We have to win now, and we have to literally go into next season being a, a top dog. So, <clears throat> let's see. <clears throat> Sixers, Celtics, Warriors, Knicks, Denver, Raptors have the trade packages to get Damian. I mean, those those are some good teams. They'd probably have a good amount to get them. I think everybody's going to try to have their hands in the pot, but we'll see, man. We'll see. Let's look at this uh, this block here. Matisse Thibel on, on Damian Lillard. This was great. <clears throat> look at this. Kicking it out. Dame going to miss the three. Gets his own rebound going in. Matisse, look at that block, man. Get that out of here. His instincts are off the charts, man. His instincts are crazy. Look at this. <clears throat> his positioning is, is amazing. Bang, get that out of here. Then there was another one. Uh, let's see. Um... There was one on KD, too, that he blocked him. There it is. Hold up. Let me turn that off. Look at this. Look at this. Stays right with him. Get that out of here. This dude's going to be such an amazing defender. And obviously, the whole thing we know is about, you know, can his jump shot improve? Well, let me tell you something. At least he's trying to improve it. Matisse is out here, and he is trying his best. He's working on his game. He's only a couple years in, but he's working on it. That's the biggest thing. That's why we're not screaming at Matisse yet. Now, if he goes into next season and he can't hit any threes at all, sure, we're going to start to talk about Matisse. Like, is it worth it? This dude can be the next 3 and D, you know, player of the NBA. I mean, he's amazing. Let me see if I can find his – uh. His jumper. Thought I had something on it, but um, you know, people were raving about this kid because I know it's the Olympics and all, but man, he was going off. <clears throat> there was one where he pulled up off the dribble. Um, let's see. Let's see. I guess I have to look up the highlights or something. But um, yeah, I mean this dude is crazy. Where's I saw something with his stats from last night? Actually, here we go. Let's look at this. Actually, let me zoom it in for you. So here's the stats last night. United States, Kevin Durant, 17. Lillard had 22. <clears throat> Look at this team. This team beat USA last night. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe Ingles with 17 points. Patty Mills with 22. Here's Matisse Thibault. Can you guys see this? 12 points, two rebounds, three assists, three steals, two blocks, five for seven from the field, and two for three from deep. I mean, you let me know what you think. You let me know what you think. This dude was shooting off the dribble last night. He was knocking down threes. His release looked like, I mean, it looked good, man. It looked good. I'm so excited for Matisse Thibault, man. He's he's only 24. He's he's going to be such a good player. I don't want to include him in a trade because I feel like 
He's a game changer, but oh man, what a game from Matisse Thibel. <sighs> Philly Talk Podcast, my guy, what's up, bro? You saw the SPs on Simmons. Yeah, I did. Um, the SPs kind of stinks now, but like, it's just, I mean, this is the thing, Philly Mike, and, and everybody in the chat, man. You're literally being clowned. You're being embarrassed on national television. You're being embarrassed on a national stage. Like, where, where's the drive at? Right? Ben Simmons should be in the gym the next morning at 5 o'clock. Oh, they're going to keep talking about me like this? I'm embarrassing. Let me go out here and shut everybody up. But let me tell you guys something. I I'm firmly believe that Ben Simmons doesn't like basketball. I'm just being completely honest. Because let me let me ask you guys something. Hold up. Let me pull myself back on the screen and ask you something real quick. Thank you for bringing this up, Philly Mike. Shout out to him, man. Let me ask you guys something. Please take a moment for me and just think for five seconds. I'm sure all of you in here have been to a basketball court before and played basketball, right? Have you ever gone to the basketball court and not taken one jump shot the entire day? Tell me. Let me know. Because the first thing I do when I pull up to the court, I'm taking a damn shot. Like, it, <laughs> does that not eat away at you? Like, you show up to the court and you don't think, like, when you think of basketball, you think of shooting a basketball. Like, like where's the drive to even, like, play? I know you're a great facilitator. You're a rebounder. But, like, who goes to a basketball court and doesn't shoot a basketball? It's like that easy. Like, I really feel like Ben Simmons doesn't have to drive to play the game. Because if he did, he'd be out here at least taking shots. It's not like he's a small, it's not like he's a small ball center that just can't shoot. He can. We saw it. And I know he's got the mental hitch and all this stuff, but even in moments like where it doesn't count, right? Like if we're up 30 in the fourth quarter, just shoot the ball. Like the first thing I do when I go to the court is shoot the ball. I if you told me I had to go to the court and play but I couldn't shoot. I, I'm not going. I'm not playing. <laughs> like, where, where's the heart at? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me, man. And that's why I really am starting to think he just doesn't like basketball. And that's fine, but it sucks for us. Because, he, like, Ben Simmons knows. The thing is, he got paid. He got his rookie of the year. He got his all-star games. He knows that everything else I do great, it'll, it'll keep me afloat. It'll keep me in the league till I'm 29, right? I'll be able to make my max contract and then retire and do whatever else I want with my life. Like, it's fine. Everything else I do fine will keep me as a good role player. But it's just when you're the number one overall pick and we know you got all the assets, if you just work on the one thing to be great, like, but you won't even shoot the ball. Like, he doesn't like the game. So... You know, he was all he was all pumped up before the All-Star game. He was pumped up when he got his rookie of the year. I mean, I remember going to war for Ben. I used to talk so much smack on Donovan Mitchell. Shut up. Ben's the rookie of the year. Ben's my guy. We uh, we were all and for us to literally defend him for 4 years, just all, you know, everybody riding with this guy. And he just goes out like that and he just I don't know. <sighs> I'd usually shoot a three first, right? You're just pulling up and like, you're, you're at least going to try, even if your jump shots, not that good. If you, if you get a pass and you're playing with your boys and you're wide open, you're, you're just going to shoot, man. Like you're not going to think that much. <laughs> I don't care if I miss, if I have the ball and I'm open, I'm going to shoot. Exactly. Like it's just, uh, it's so easy that it, it shouldn't be this hard to think about, but it's just crazy, man. Ben Simmons can't win his girl prize at the fair. Exactly. Unbelievable. Martian, what's up, man? I'm actually waiting on a Woj bond that says it's Dane time in Philly. Yo, that happens, guys. We are, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to lose my mind. I just want the tweet where I wake up and it goes, Damian Lillard has officially requested a trade. Here are the teams that are interested. Man. Oh, man. Oh, man. 
Yeah, like what does he do when he pulls up to a court shoot layups for two? No, he literally shoots in pregame. Like when I went to game two, I watched this man entire pregame routine. He was he was knocking down free throws. He was out at the corner. He was shooting little mid range floaters. He it just doesn't make sense. Like I feel like he does that just to show that he's working on it. But he doesn't care about in the game. He doesn't, man. There's no, there's like no even emotion. And and when we went out in the saddest moment in years, this dude was asking about how many times he um he stole the ball from Trey Young or whatever. Like, come on, man. Exactly, Richie. He has generational wealth, and that's enough go. Yeah. Yep. Win or lose, he gets paid. Exactly. Exactly. And it just sucks. He's not one of the guys that wants to win, unfortunately. So. <sighs> Yeah, exactly. Ben Simmons was just so good at everything else. But, you know, I don't I don't buy the thing where people say, oh, he never shoot. Yes, he did. He did shoot. He did. He just doesn't like I don't know. I, I don't know, man. It's just disappointing. It's just disappointing. But anyway, that's pretty much what I had to. Uh, let me see if I can find this Matisse Thibel, uh pull up right here, man. see um all right here we go see if we can watch this hopefully we don't hit the uh the little copyright but let's see bang all right let's mute that hold up This was last night. Matisse Thibault, 12 points, three assists, two blocks, full highlights. Look at this, man. <clears throat> Look at this. Pulling up, crossing over, driving down low. Man, if Matisse Thibault learns up how to operate off the dribble, man, that, that would be even more lethal, to be honest. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. I mean, he's just ready for anything, man. He's ready all the time. Look at this. Bang. Look at that. Looks smooth. Hold up. Hold up. That's the 3 and D future star right there I'm talking about. Come on, man. He didn't even hesitate. He didn't even think about it. Look at this. Bang. Oh, my gosh. That thing was smooth. That was smooth. Oh, man. Matisse is a is a is a monster, man. Matisse is a monster. Look at this. Here's the one on uh on Lillard. <clears throat> Gets his own board, drives in, bang, get that out of here. Come on, man. Thibel's gonna be a stun. He really is. I, I really don't want and his personality. I love the kid, man. He's very personable. Here's the one on Kevin Durant going in. Bang, get that out of here. Oh man. They really took down this team of monsters, bro. They took that. This team, who knows if they're even going to get the gold medal, man. Look at this. Keeps his feet level. Shifts his feet. Bang, get that out of here. He's just so smooth with it. Like, this dude literally will give us five blocks and four steals in a game, and we'll act like it's just normal. We'll act like it's just normal, man. It's unbelievable. Yeah, everybody, please hit the like button if you're in here, man. Um we're going to be doing these live shows at least twice, three times a week. So we have a lot to cover, man. But thank you guys so much for being in here. I really appreciate it. Oh, sorry. I love Matisse Thibel, man. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Disrupting it, man. Shout out to my guy, uh, Richie, coming in with a $2 donation. Thank you so much, Richie. I really appreciate that, man. 
He says, break it down, USA versus Argentina next game. I honestly forget who's on Argentina. But really what it, what there is to break down, Richie, is, you know, stop playing so much ISO ball. Like, it's just crazy. Like, you put all these stars together on one team. Who, they, they don't know who should attack and who should sit back. Like, it's just, I don't know. I feel like it's early on. I feel like they'll figure it out. But they just really don't care, you know. They just, <laughs> like, they're just, they're just going through the motions, you know. So, um. But if they lose again, man, the world, I mean, the world's probably already erupting today. But um, look at this. Nice pass. Patty Mills, by the way, is going off. People keep saying Patty Mills should uh, should come to the Sixers. <clears throat> These games really, yo, know, what's going on, uh, Rick and Max JB? Shout out to the great channel members in the building, man. Appreciate you guys being in here. Team USA lose a lot. Are they out of the Olympics? Um, well, these aren't, these are just kind of like early games that really don't count that much. But when, once we get to the qualifiers and stuff, if they lose, then, yeah, they're not going to, uh, you know, win the gold medal. But they should get their act together. But to lose two games like that in a row, it just it just doesn't look good, especially for us because we're always supposed to dominate the Olympics, you know. But um, they should get it. Uh, they should get it together. Dude cuts off the ball. I mean, he's amazing, man. I don't know why it's lagging, but anyway, those are pretty much the uh, those are pretty much the highlights. But um, yeah, man, we'll put it back to this. Um. But, yeah, man, the Team USA, they have to get it together, man. They have to get it together. Um, I mean, they could, like, they should be dominating these teams. And it just goes to show, man, when you when you have good ball movement, good chemistry, when you have guys playing together, anything can happen, man. Uh, but Matisse showed me a lot. I know it's, you know, just kind of like a scrimmage laid back game. But, you know, his shot's getting better. He, his instincts are there. It's amazing. It's awesome. So, Good point, Philly Mike. He says they're not used to getting every foul call from the refs. Exactly. Seth, what's going on? Appreciate the $2 donation, my man. Shout out to the great channel members. Says, what up, RB? You got to do the next USA B-ball game. I could try. <laughs> might be uh, might be a bit hard, depending on who the other players are on the other team. But um, I'd be down to do that, especially if it's on, uh, on TV and I have it. Definitely, Seth. Hope everything's good, my man. Appreciate everybody in here, man. If you guys haven't yet, hit that like, subscribe, man. Um, when is the next game? Let me know when the next game is. Let me know when the next game is. Let's get this to hundred likes guys. We got 90 up in here, man. We need 10 people to hit that like button. Appreciate you all being in here. We're going to be doing live shows every week. Um, still dropping videos. This is kind of the news that, that broke here. I'll probably have a, um, I might do a video on this separately, but yep. Sixers opening up trade combos around Ben Simmons and have engaged with teams. Um, let me see if I can find like an article. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Um, are they going to tell us the teams? Probably not. And by the way, guys, um, I'll be completely honest. Like, again, I didn't expect them to do this now, but I don't. <sighs> USA versus Argentina. Oh, it's on tonight. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to do that game, but I'll definitely have to do at least one of them coming up soon. Um, I didn't know they would play back to back, but yeah, man. Um in term in terms of this this whole trade thing, like I didn't expect them to you know start talking about it now, and I don't always believe Shams, right? Like, there's been some things he's reported before, and it's like it does not come true, so it's very frustrating. But we'll see, man. We'll see. Sixers enter the off season at crossroads. Well, let me zoom this in. Um. See if I can zoom it in some more. 
Do they improve the roster around MVP finalists Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and hope the latter can flourish after a working after working on his shot during the summer, or do they trade the point guard and bring in a new talent to pair with Embiid after the Sixers' second round loss to the Hawks? Philadelphia was committed to making the Embiid Simmons do a work. Yeah, <clears throat> not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Um, ben Simmons is his ticket's already punched out of Philadelphia. It's just where and when. Um, and, and I feel like there's going to be a good amount of value for Ben Simmons because at this point, it's like you know. Someone's going to be willing to bet on the potential and the opportunity to try to just improve one thing about him. So, <laughs> Matisse Stiebel is going to be 2024 NBA MVP. Imagine that. Um, athletes like Ben piss you off because people would kill to have that skill set and opportunity, but he looks at being the greatest and shrugs his shoulders. Exactly, man. Exactly. He doesn't want it. He does not want it, and I just don't. I just don't think he, he likes the game. I really don't. Um, there's been so many opportunities where he's had literally the chance to say, okay, if I do this, our team can win the championship. And he just – he doesn't. So, he doesn't. So, I'm, I'm done with that. And, you know, there is just no room for not giving effort. So, that's where we're at. But I do want him going. I don't care. You know, I, I care that we get value back, but at the – end of the offseason if he's still in this team i'm going to be very displeased i am um and i think a lot of changes are coming i think you're going to see an overhaul of the roster um now whether that means getting rid of ben and tobias right danny green might go like we're, we're going to need some talent in here it's time to get some shooting like when you go back and look at the sixers like the offense that we played it's not even convent the heck hold up the hell Where's that coming from all right I, I don't know what the heck that was but anyway um i forget what i was saying oh yeah but um yeah if, if we come back and we bring ben simmons back right it's just like you're, you're just telling me that you're complacent with staying where you're at. You're telling me that you're complacent with just being that second round exit. And, you know, I, I keep saying this teams are going to come back strong in the East. You think we're going to keep the same team? We're going to compete with Brooklyn and Milwaukee and I don't know, Atlanta, Miami. Like, no, we're not. We're not at all. So. But yeah, I agree, Teddy. He just doesn't have the grit. Guys on Twitter try to tell me we need to build around Ben and Joel as if we haven't been trying for the last five years. People, like people on Twitter, on this app, YouTube, everywhere, man. Like I've just come to realize and I've come to peace with the fact that you just won't win against the Ben fanboys. They're stuck in their ways. They're 10 to 12 years old and they just have their favorite player. And that's just how it is. You know, they don't know a lot about basketball. They're just going to support them no matter what. But if you've been to Philadelphia, if you've been to the games, if you know what the sports atmosphere is like here, you know that there is no room for what happened in that playoffs. You know everything that was riding on that series. And if you just sit up here and, and you go, okay, you know, that's okay. We'll come back. We'll cheer you on. Just like Danny Green said. No, no, that's not what we represent, man. It's time, it's time to break it up. We went as long as we could thinking Ben Simmons could be a point forward. He's not. He's going to end up being a center, to be honest. So, <sighs> Let's see. Uh, would Seth Curry be the starting point guard if Ben Simmons gets traded? I don't think so. I think, uh, I think everything is designed around getting a point guard in here, a new point guard. And like, that's what I was trying to say. We, we haven't had – any elite point guard since we had – I mean, we, well, we haven't had an elite point guard in a long time, but we haven't had sufficient point guard play since we had Drew Holiday and Lou Williams. This was back in 2011. We keep trying to go through playing with two centers and, you know, just playing a bunch of big men. And, you know, I, I'm fine with the offense being catered around Joel, but you need a guy that can come in off the bounce, right? Joel Embiid has doors that haven't even been unlocked yet. Joel Embiid doesn't even play that much pick and roll game. 
And if he could do that, imagine the screens he can set rolling off the screens. Like, there's just so much that hasn't even been unlocked, and that's scary to think about because Joel Embiid is that good already. He is. So, <sighs> let's see. I forgot Ben has fans. Yeah, it's just a bunch of fanboys, and I just can't argue with them anymore. You know, they, they will defend him to the end of time, and they just don't know the Philly atmosphere, you know? People will look you straight in the face and say, you know, Ben Simmons is uh, he, he's okay. He'll be okay. Yeah, he might be when he's 28, but maybe not. Maybe not. We've never seen something like it. So, I think Larry's only going to take 10 mil. No, I, I don't think so. And I, I think we're going to have to shed cap. I do, uh, Matt. And I think it would be a sign and trade most likely. Now, the Raptors have leverage because they know teams like Philly need him. Someone's going to overpay for him. But at the same time, the Sixers would also have leverage because Toronto can't get as much as they once could at the trade deadline. But they held firm. They kept Kyle Lowry. And they, they you know, they're not going to get as much as they were before. So, because they obviously cannot keep him again. So, Philly loves Matisse. Yeah, they do. Um, Sixers need that Aussie coach. Well, Doc Rivers is going to be on the hot seat as well. You know, if he comes out and he can't perform and he can't get us to where we need to go, he's gone next year. I really do believe that. So um, there's no time for it anymore, you know. And I think I think Doc Rivers with another point guard, I think this team will be fine because Doc Rivers made Joel Embiid, you know, he, he really made him come out of his shell and just be that consistent MVP type player. He helped guys like Tobias. But really, the common denominator comes back to Ben Simmons, and Doc defended him, which was absolutely 100% wrong. But, you know, I mean, that's what a coach is going to do, probably not to that extent. But, I mean, I just think with a more kind of, you know, a better fit kind of team, I think will be a lot better. So, um, but yeah, man. Um, what have we been on here? An hour? All right, we'll, we'll get off here in a couple minutes. We still got 170 in here, guys. I really appreciate everybody being in here, man. Please like and subscribe if you are in here. We're going to be doing these live shows twice or three times a week. We'll probably have another one maybe on Thursday or Friday. Um, we'll be covering all the Sixers news, free agency, trades, draft coming up. I'll be on vacation next week. I'll have a couple videos out, and then we'll do a live stream for the draft. Um, the merch should be coming out tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. A lot of, a lot of good things coming, man. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll kind of close off my last statement. I'll read a couple more comments, but Daryl Morey, he knows the pressure's on. Daryl Morey tried to trade Ben Simmons. He tried to do it and he failed. Maybe it wasn't his fault, but you know, it like Daryl Morey was pushed over the edge. If you watched that exit press conference, he was sick to his stomach. He literally said, like, I still don't know how we lost that series. And I don't either. It's just embarrassing. Um, we, we just don't have the right fit on this team. And we have no time to waste. And we, ha we have to get something done. Everybody knows that. Philly, you know, despite what people think, oh, we're not going to be a good trade destination. Oh, we're toxic, this and that. Um, look, man. We need to get something done. Whether that's a star player, whether that's bringing a bunch of shooters and a bunch of talent in here, we got to get something done. There's no ifs, ands, or buts anymore. If we don't go out, in my opinion, if we don't go out and get a huge star, you know, get it, get another elite score, I, I think it's a bust of an offseason. But I think we'll have some uh, some good de uh, decisions, good scenarios, and a bunch of stuff to talk about. So, um, but yeah. What I'll tell you guys is that we can't settle anymore. We can't go ahead and, and you know, th this situation, along with all the other bad situations that have happened, they've really taught me a lot about being a fan, you know? Like, the next time things happen like this, I'm not going to give as long as a leash, as long of a leash as I have with Ben Simmons. It's absolutely disappointing, you know? We kind of got to put our, our fan-ism to the side and, and just realize, like, you know, this guy didn't shoot a basketball for four years. It's It costed us probably a chance to win a championship. In my young life so far, I've been blessed to see my Philadelphia Phillies win a World Series. That was so much fun. I've seen my Philadelphia Eagles win a Super Bowl. That was priceless, one of the best moments I've ever experienced. 
obviously I want the Flyers to win, but you know what, man? The Philadelphia 76ers have to complete it, man. They have to win a, a, a championship, man. <sighs> I really hope we get something done this offseason. I'm like, I'm excited, but I'm also very nervous at the same time. Because Daryl Morey did fail at the trade deadline to get something done. He brought in George Hill, and that wasn't enough. But I, I just hope there's a bigger plan. I hope he was saving. You know, Daryl Moore, I'm, I'll never forget the first press conference he had. He said, we have a ton of assets, but we're going to use them at the right time. Now, whether he did or did not do that this past season, you know, we'll, we'll look at that for a long time. But he's got to get his redemption, man. Daryl Moore, the guy that's been able to, to acquire stars, he has to get this done. He has to get something big done. He really does. And, I, and that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Shout out to Rick Bennett, man. Hope he, hope you're feeling better, my guy. Says, we cannot do trades with Houston. Their owner hates Daryl Morey. That's why we did not get Harden. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. And that's not really Daryl's fault. I mean, just a, it, it is what it is, you know. You can use an inco incognito browser windows to get around athletic paywalls. There we go. I'll have to try that out. Barn, what's going on, my guy? Monroe, what's good? What's up, bro? The Hawks, the Suns were once the farm system. Exactly. But the Suns just went out, the Hawks went out, and they just acquired shooting, shooting, and shooting. The Suns got Devin Booker at pick 13. The Hawks drafted Trey Young and Kevin Herter in the same draft. It's just you got to get talent, man. You have to build a team the right way, and the Sixers have just lacked too much shooting and ball handling. We need some perimeter creation, man. That's what we need, and it has to get done. It has to get done. Don't forget, we almost beat Toronto, and Ben had an awful series a few years back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Mike. And if Ben could play offense, we would have won that series, and we would have went to the championship, and we probably would have beat the Warriors who were banged up. And these are the types of things I'm saying, man. We can't just let these opportunities go anymore. So I understand going after Dame or another huge star, but we can't get rid of Thibel, trade Ben for McCollum, and other players sign Kyle Larry. If we can get Dame without giving up Thibel, we'll do it. I mean, I'm there with you, man. I don't want to give up Matisse. I really don't. But at the end of the day, if that's the trade decider, I'm, I'm considering that heavily. If we can get Dame Lillard in here, I'm considering that. I am. Um, now, am I giving up Thibel for Kyle Larry? That, that's a hard one for me. But I'm definitely considering it. I'm considering all possibilities. But, you know, if we if we get a Kyle Lowry and a C.J. McCollum, and then we got, you know, we, we get a forward, we have Tobias Harris, that's not a bad lineup. It's not. But anyway, appreciate all you guys coming through, man. Um, if you guys missed it, be sure to go back and watch the entire show. We'll be doing this a couple times a week. Got the merch dropping probably tomorrow. Um, we have a lot to, uh, to talk about. We, I might stream the next USA game, not tonight, but I might stream the next one after that. Um, we have a lot to talk about, man. Free agency trades, all that good stuff. I might put out a, a, a video on this Ben Simmons thing once I, you know, kind of collect a, a few more thoughts on it. We'll see. Um, there's not really much else to say, you know, and that's, that's one last thing I'll say. People keep saying, oh, you keep talking about Ben Simmons, you know, you're using it for content. No, I, I don't want to keep talking about Ben Simmons. The dude makes me embarrassed to be a Sixers fan. All my Ben Simmons merchandise, I can't even wear it anymore. I'm just embarrassed to wear it. People keep saying, oh, when uh, when Ben Simmons leaves Sixers content, people won't have anything to talk about. No, we'll have exciting basketball to talk about. Hopefully, we'll acquire a star, and we'll be talking about a potential championship contender, man. So... Who knows, man? We will see. But, hey, appreciate all you guys coming through uh, to the chat. I hope you guys have been enjoying the content lately. Um, feel free to leave all your thoughts on the comments after the video uh, uploads. And with that being said, we'll probably have probably a video today or tomorrow. Uh, members live stream only tonight. And we'll probably be live on Thursday again, maybe get a collab going. But, anyway, you guys have a, a great day, man. Hope everybody's well. And I will catch you guys on the next one, man. Peace.